Hi, this is Vashi Nedimansky. I'm a feature film editor and editorial consultant based out of Los Angeles. And I'd like to welcome you back to part three of my The Importance of Color video series, where we're gonna cover the importance of color in video content creation and some of the best practices and some of the gear that I use to try and achieve the best quality output. If you missed the first two videos, there's a link down below that will take you there so you can catch up to speed and prepare yourselves for chapter three. Today, I wanted to talk about my actual color pipeline in the projects that I edit and do the color grading on and why I've chosen the Dell UP3221Q, the 4K HDR 32 inch monitor as my main go-to and pretty much the only one that I use now for all of my color grading, finishing, before I make the final deliverables to deliver to the world. For me, it's important to future-proof my workflow. So something that works today, but is outdated in, in a month or two, isn't really useful for me. I want something that has some life, that has some forward-looking aspects and, and options that will protect me in the future when new camera codecs come up, new iterations of HDR. I wanna be prepared for that. So I'm not buying a new monitor every year. For me, it's super critical to have accuracy and repeatability with my monitor. Um, my Dell monitor has the self calibration tool, which allows me to you know, calibrate anytime I want and know that it is going to represent accurately all the colors that I'm recording or want to share with the world at the end of the project. It's also a certified HDR monitor, which means it has to have HDR 10 bit and it has to have at least a thousand nits of brightness. What I love about my Dell 3221Q is that I can use this in my edit bay, which I have it set up directly above my main screen to show me my colors and show me my output. But I can also take this on studio sets. I can take this on location shoots. And because it's so bright, I can set it up in a relatively shady area if needed, and I can get accurate colors and I can see the brightness of the image. And when we're shooting with these cameras today that do capture HDR, you have to have a computer and a monitor set up for HDR to actually view it. And this monitor lets me be both mobile and situated in my edit bay, wherever that may be, and know that I'm seeing the accurate colors and know that I can show the director and the producer exactly the output that's coming out of the camera and they can get a better sense of, do we have it? Is that what we were going after? You can't just use any monitor and expect professional results. You have to have properly calibrated, properly aligned, in the right color space, settings all matching between the camera, the codec, the software, the hardware, the monitor. Everything has its place and everything has to be set up right. If you do that early up front, then it should go smoothly down the road. There are several features of my Dell monitor that I literally can't live without anymore. Um, First and foremost being that it's 32 inches, it's 4K and it's HDR as we talked about before. For me, that's the new norm. That's the bottom line that I have to have to take on professional project and to be able to accurately do my work and show the results at the highest level. Also, 10-bit color is really important to me. With even smartphones now being able to shoot 10-bit color and 10-bit video files, I have to be able to register that and display that. So I'm seeing over a billion colors as opposed to the 8-bit, which is really, really condensed and you get a lot of degradation, you get the stepping, the aliasing, you get a lot of macro blocking in 8-bit. So 10-bit is my new bottom line, which I have to have, which is critical to my workflow as a professional. Having a monitor that is 99.8% DCI P3 color space accurate is huge for me. A lot of the projects I deliver are either short films, feature films, documentaries, music videos. Having such almost 100% accuracy with DCI P3 color space, again, a huge, huge important part of my workflow that I have to have because I, I can't make mistakes. Again, the thousand nits of brightness is required by definition for a certified HDR monitor, and that's super bright. I mean, I have 250 nit monitors that are color accurate, but the room has to be pitch black. So nits, bright nits, a thousand nits, we like that. Lastly, with over 2000 mini LED backlit zones on this monitor, this gives me 
even more consistency across the entire 32 inch screen, knowing that each zone can be controlled and tested and calibrated. There's other popular HDR monitors that only have 500 zones or even a thousand, but with over 2000 in the Dell, it gives me more control and more accuracy. And when I do calibrate it, it's gonna show me a little more contrast, a really dynamic range of contrast. And because there are so many zones, it's also gonna cut down on the halo effect or the blooming in between the pure white and pure black that we sometimes see on inferior monitors. So I'm gonna get a more accurate picture, less halo effect, less blooming, more consistency. And these, you know, this is a monitor I use every day. For your reference, here is the pipeline inside DaVinci Resolve that shows the best practices for color correction and color grading and the mathematics that are involved as your picture and images goes through the pipeline. Now you don't have to use every node, but this shows every step of what happens inside DaVinci Resolve and how the colors and imagery are affected. So set this aside if you ever wanna have a guide to help you with your color correction and color grading. One of my current projects is a documentary called Big Ned. It's about my dad, who was a professional hockey player for over 30 years and was just inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame last year. We, um, as a family, we defected from Czechoslovakia and we grew up in both Canada and the United States. In this documentary, I have over 150 hours of archival footage. So we scanned 35 millimeter film, 16 millimeter film, super eight millimeter film, all sorts of different formats, over 10 different formats. Some of them, the film has been tinted over time. So color grading and color accuracy, when I'm dealing with over 150 hours of footage that has taken the toll of time on it, and some of the colors are so out of whack, to bring it back to normalcy, I need, again, accuracy and repeatability and a great starting point on a calibrated monitor that I trust. So here's a couple other reasons why I chose this specific monitor and why I made it the core of my professional workflow. Color calibration, I know it's accurate. Reliability, dependability, accuracy, and chock full of features. Easily accessible by the joystick on the back that just takes a, a quick little tick and you open up the menu. And it is a very deep menu and I have a lot of options, everything from the color space that I'm choosing the monitor to live in. So the footage that I'm looking at or the end goal deliverable, whatever that may be, I can be working in the right color space and each one of those color spaces can be calibrated. I can get the technical out of the way, focus on the creative and focus on telling my story, and making it look pretty. For the director and the producers and the people that are paying for that day, it's nice to be able to show them an accurate, reliable, calibrated image to put their mind at ease. And that's half our job as creatives and artists and colorists and, and editors. Work with the people, make them feel good, make them feel confident and gain their trust and you'll get more work out of it. And that's the end goal. We would like to have more work, more jobs, more options. So to wrap up, that's a little look into my color pipeline, how I implement the Dell UP3221Q HDR 4K monitor into my pipeline and how it's become the core of everything I do color related and also use it for editing. I take my laptop and that monitor anywhere I go, I'm a powerful mobile editing and color accurate grading station that I can export any file to the world and see it on a screen, on the internet, or on a phone later that day. Color is just another tool in our bag of goodies that we can pull out at any time to make people feel whatever we want, create that emotion, and make them feel good, bad, scared, fearful, whatever it is, it's, it's all emotion. And it's done through color, and you have to have the right tools to do it, and you have to know the background behind these monitors and, and codecs and color spaces. The more you know, the better chance you're gonna have of having a, a, a glorious result that we all want so we could share that with the world. Thank you for letting me share some of my techniques, some of the gear that I use, some of the knowledge that I've acquired that I wanted to share with you, and hopefully you can use that on your own projects with great result. So that's it for now. Take care everyone, stay safe, and we'll see you around. Thank you.